Hey, Pastor Al. Hey. Thank you for sitting down with us and answering some questions about Juneteenth. I'm excited to celebrate. You know, we thought of you when we thought of sitting down with someone and just um, kind of learning about Juneteenth and, and what that means for the Black church and the future of the church at large. Um, so my first question for you is, when you think of Juneteenth, what, what comes to mind? Like, what is the history of Juneteenth from your knowledge? And what does that mean for the Black church? Okay, well, uh, first off, I want to say thank you. Um, you know, I'm not very much of a, of a historian, uh, but when I think of Juneteenth, uh, the history behind it is in 1863, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, which was to go into effect January 1st. I'm sorry, 1862, he signed it. to go into effect January 1st of 1863. And Unfortunately, there was a population or a group of slaves who never received the emancipation, neither were they told about it. Uh, it wasn't until two and a half years later when military actually went into Galveston uh, and made it known at that time to enforce the Emancipation Proclamation. That was on June 19th, 1865. Hence, we come up with the date or the event as Juneteenth. Um, I don't particularly see it as a as a church event. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I do see it as a uh, as a Black Independence Day or African American Independence Day. Uh, but that's about the, the extent of it from my perspective as a as a pastor. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. You know, um, when I think of particularly the Black church um, before Juneteenth, after and present. Um, I think of the hope that they carried. Um, black believers, um, enslaved people who, who loved God. I think of this prophetic hope that they carried that trusted and still trusts the character of God and his promises. Um, even if you can't see it playing around you, um, in your current circumstance or even in your own lifetime, but still that hope, trust the Lord and right. it, it trust the promises of the Lord. Um, my question for you is how do we as one body, one diverse, beautiful body, how do we carry this hope um, for the future generations and, and as a body right now? Okay. Well, you know, I think it's the primary thing is believing. Uh, and so when you talk about enslavement, when you talk about the um, African slaves, you can't really talk about that without even thinking about Israel itself. Uh, and one of one of my go-to scriptures for that uh, is we, we hear Jeremiah 29, 11, when God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Well, if you go back and read the verses prior to that, he actually instructs Israel to go into captivity. But he says, when you go into captivity, don't act like captives. Don't act like slaves. He says, I want you to build houses. I want you to plant vineyards. I want you to raise your families. I want you to marry off your sons and your daughters. But when you do this, I have a hope for you. I'm going to come back and I'm going to visit you again. So when we talk about the hope, it's important for us as a body. It's so important for us to believe what the word of God has to say about our future and not be distracted by the uh, by the social ills or the divisions that, that are surrounding us and at times consuming us. That's good. That's good. So what would you say to my generation, you know, these these young people who are going to eventually like lead in the church? Like how do we um, continue to carry that well? Like, what is the wisdom that you would share with someone like me? Wow. Uh, again, believe. He that comes to God must believe that he is, is God, and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. We must get ourselves to that place where we are trusting God with our whole heart, 
our whole soul, our whole mind, in every aspect of our lives. Yes, I understand that you know, there are certain rights that you believe that you're entitled to, but believe this first, that once you come to know who Jesus Christ is, you are first a kingdom citizen before you are a United States citizen. Because you are a kingdom citizen, every action, every thought, every behavior is going to reflect on who your God is. So if you're trusting God and you're taking care of his business, guess what? He's going to take care of yours. Amen. That's the word. That's the <laughs> word. Thank you again for sitting down with us. We really appreciate it. And I'm excited to celebrate you with you.